If your developers have been building Apache Spark applications on Amazon Redshift, they may be using Spark Redshift Open Source Connector. It is often a manual and cumbersome process to set up that connector. The new Amazon Redshift integration for Apache Spark eliminates the need for complex manual setup. It helps your developers to seamlessly build and run Apache Spark applications to read from and write to Amazon Redshift Data Warehouse. You can get started using your favorite AWS analytics services, Amazon EMR 6.9, EMR Serverless, or AWS Glue 4.0. You only need to specify the connection, and you can start working with Amazon Redshift from your Apache Spark-based applications within minutes. Using this integration, you can use IAM-based authentication to make your Apache Spark applications more secure. You can use familiar Spark Data Frame APIs or Spark SQL APIs. Several Spark Data Frame API operations are pushed down to Amazon Redshift, which results in superior performance. Let's now see a demo on how Amazon Redshift integration for Apache Spark simplifies running Apache Spark applications using Amazon EMR and EMR Serverless. We will see how to use this integration to read data from and write data into Amazon Redshift using EMR cluster on EC2. We will then see how to submit an Apache Spark job on Amazon Redshift using EMR Serverless. Let's start with EMR on EC2. I created an EMR cluster with the name My Cluster. It is using EMR version 6.9.0 and Spark version 3.3.0. For Redshift, I'm using Amazon Redshift Serverless. I've pre-created a serverless namespace and serverless workgroup. I'm using an EMR notebook connected to my cluster that I've previously shown to run the Spark commands. First, provide Redshift JDBC and Spark Redshift connector jars to the Spark application. These jars are locally available on EMR clusters using version 6.9 and above and EMR Serverless. You can use them using a local path as shown here. Next, import the Spark modules and initiate a Spark session. Next, provide Redshift options to establish a connection between Apache Spark and Amazon Redshift. You can authenticate using username and password or an IAM role. IAM authentication is more secure as you don't explicitly provide a username and password. Provide a JDBC URL that uses IAM authentication as shown here. Next, provide an S3 path that acts as a temporary directory and an IAM role that Redshift uses to connect to Amazon S3. I'm also setting a query group to Spark Redshift in order to label the queries executed using this connection. That is all you need to set up. Now you are all set to use Spark Data Frame APIs and Spark SQL APIs. The new Amazon Redshift to Spark integration will push down many operations to Amazon Redshift so that only the relevant data is moved from Amazon Redshift data warehouse to the consuming Spark application. I will now run some Spark data frame APIs to show examples of some pushdowns. In my first example, we will see pushdown for join, filter, aggregate, and sort. We will use sales and date tables from ticket dataset to get total quantity sold for each quarter in 2008. I created a data frame sales DF for sales table. Similarly, I have created a data frame date DF for date table. I then performed a join between the date data frame and sales data frame using date ID column and performed a filter for year 2008. I then grouped by quarter and did a sum on quantity sold. I then sorted the output on quarter. I'm running this code. It has executed and returned the result. I have created a function to get the last issued query from Redshift for the query label spark underscore Redshift. I'll execute the function now. As you can see in this query, the inner join, the filter, the group by, the order by, the aggregation sum, 
are all pushed down to Redshift and only relevant data is sent back to Spark. Let's see another example of a pushdown. In this example, we are counting the distinct buyers in sales table. From the sales data frame, I've selected the buyer ID column and performed a distinct and count. I'm going to execute this query now. Here is the result. I'm going to get the last query issued to Redshift one more time to see the pushdowns. And you can see that the count is pushed down to Redshift and distinct is converted into more optimized group by. Also, data is unloaded into optimized Parquet format. This is how you perform read operations on Redshift efficiently using Apache Spark to Amazon Redshift integration. Next, let's see how to write data into Amazon Redshift. The raw data that we are going to load is available in JSON format in Amazon S3. The JSON has data about customers, customer orders, and the line items for each order. Let's create a data frame to read data from JSON. Now let's look at the schema of the JSON. As you can see, the JSON is a nested JSON. It has data for each customer, an array of orders for each customer, and each order has an array of line items. We are going to load each of these nested levels into three separate tables. We'll first create customer data frame with the required fields from the underlying JSON data frame. We will then write the customer data frame into Amazon Redshift to a table called customer. I'm executing this code. I'll now get the last issued query from Redshift. As we have used the write more append, Spark would create a table if it doesn't already exist and then copy the data from S3 into Redshift. Similarly, let's create an orders data frame by selecting the required columns for the orders table. We'll then write the orders data frame into a table called order with append mode. Finally, let's create a line item data frame with the required columns for the line item and write the line item data frame to line item table. In this write operation, we are going to add a post action to refresh a materialized view called MV total price segment by year. This materialized view is created on top of customer orders and line items table, and the data is aggregated by segment and year. With this, the data load is complete and materialized view is refreshed. Using these steps, we have loaded customer table, orders table, line item table, and refreshed a materialized view that is created on top of these three tables. Let's look at the data from the materialized view. Here is the data that has been loaded and summarized. This is how you use Apache Spark integration to Amazon Redshift to load data into Amazon Redshift. How to use EMR serverless to submit a Spark job on Amazon Redshift. I'm going to use AWS CLI for this purpose. I'm using start job run command to execute the job. To the start job run command, I provide an execution role with the required permissions. I also provide the script that I would like to execute and the jars, Redshift JDBC jar and the Spark Redshift jars. I provide optional configuration overrides such as the log path. Once I execute the CLI command, I would get a job run ID. I can check the status of this job using get job run command. It is this simple to submit Spark jobs on Amazon Redshift using EMR serverless. You can submit Spark jobs on Amazon Redshift using this native integration using AWS Glue 4.0 as well. Please go ahead and try the Amazon Redshift to Spark integration. Thanks for watching the demo. Have a good day.